Hi, I'm Keith, Mark's behind the camera, and today we're doing part three of our little shack down by the creek. <laughs> Mark talk. <laughs> so if you haven't watched part one and part two, uh, videos are in our channel. Obviously, look at the older videos. Part one, Keith focused on the trees in the background. Part two was the shed, uh, the fence posts, and some of the middle ground elements. Uh, if you want to see the materials that Keith used, what paints he used, the brushes he uses, the paper he uses, um, there's a link in the description that will take you to a full list of all the materials used and where to purchase them. We've got the arches, 140 cold press paper, the schminky pan paint, uh, low Cornell brushes, and a black velvet brush that was used in part one. Uh, so check those out. Uh, use the links. We earn a little commission and a thank you. You don't pay anymore. Or just use it as a checklist to go purchase at your local art supply center. That's always you know, a good thing too. Because there's probably only one left in the country. Um, so I'm uh, about to begin. Uh, we're, we're getting down by the creek. Uh, I've kind of created a bunch of stones by the edge of the creek. Uh, I, I thought uh, a lot of people ask me, "How do you do rocks? How do you how do you give them some dimension?" I, a lot of times, uh, what people do is they 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 paint them they're all flat and kind of funky looking so what i'm going to try to do is show you how to create rocks that are a little more dynamic a little more interesting and basically what it boils down to is uh give your rocks some facets uh everybody tries to make these smooth round little things even smooth rocks have sides they're not Little, you know, they're not spheres, they're not perfect ovals. And that's what I think uh, most people make that mistake. So I'm going to begin by, very quickly, deciding what color my rocks are going to be. I'm going to uh, stick with probably, you know, one or two colors to do this. I'm going to begin with uh, ultramarine blue. <laughs> my favorite stock color of all times. But... I'm going to add now a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, and by mixing the two together, I can get a variation of, of uh, different grays. So I'm going to start with a kind of a, a bluish gray, and I'm going to just, I'm going to not quite hit all of the rock. What did you mix with the ultramarine blue? This is a uh, burnt sienna. What I am going to do is I'm kind of wetting these rocks. I'm giving them a, a little base coat, so to speak. And what I don't want you to do is to, to hit everything. I want you to leave a little white or a little bit of light on them, especially on the, on the tops. If you get my meaning. All right, so. Are these going to be shiny, reflective, wet rocks? Or no. Or are these going to be kind of? No, these are just, uh, uh, along the base, they'll have a little bit of, uh, of uh, color, uh, you know, things yeah. sitting in water. They, you know, they, they acquire some mold, various, um, you know, degrees of uh, clutter. <laughs> anyway. So I'm going to I'm going to start on this section. I don't know if you noticed. See how I left some white? Now they don't all have to be white white, but I like to leave a little bit of of light value, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I got to kind of wait for it to dry up a little bit. So yeah, um, hmm. What do you think? It's up to you. Can you take a pause? No. You know what I'm going to do? Uh-oh. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to confuse you all. And I am going to actually start doing the... Uh, the uh, reflection of the rock in the water. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to put some of that same gray down. We made it a little bit darker. And I'm just going to kind of bleed it off a little bit. Yeah, you will get a little bit. Now it's a creek, so it's going to be moving a little faster. So this is not going to be a um, a static bit of water. So yeah, you'll see some of the reflective color. You'll see some of the sky. What you won't see is a very clean image of anything. <laughs> okay, so all right. So I've put a little bit of color underneath the rocks just uh, to represent the rocks. The, the color reflecting in the water. All right, and yeah, it does look like I'm gonna have to wait a minute. So I'm gonna let this dry and we'll, we'll come back to it. Okay, all right, so I've gotten a very light coat of color on these, uh, on these uh, rocks down by the creek. And I'm gonna start uh, creating a little bit of uh, shadow now a little bit of uh what i mean by the facets what's going to make these rocks more three-dimensional so let me do one and we can kind of figure this out so i'm kind of doing the shadowy one side and I'm kind of outlining a little bit of the rock right below it. And I'm just going to kind of soften this up a little bit. But the thing is, like I said, they don't have to be perfectly smooth or round rocks. I like them when they have a little bit of a little break or a little texture in them. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm kind of giving them facets. So the bottom of the rock here has a little more value down here. As you can see, I like breaking them up so that they're not just one round smooth rock. All right. Oh, this one. How's this? Okay. So then down near the base a little bit and add a little more color. And what this does is this kind of breaks this rock away from the ones in front of it. So let me do, oh, do another one. So I'm going to break it. I'm kind of like outlining, but be careful about outlining. We don't want it too uh, like yeah, too drawn. Okay. Although, I want to kind of add a little more brown, a little more color to these. They seem to be fading away on me. So that's what I'm doing. So like I said, you can give them just by kind of pushing color around a little bit, a little bit of just a little bit of faceting to the rocks so they're not so smooth. So actually you can kind of outline them. Just be careful where you're outlining them. Don't like outline along the grass along the top here. Okay. You want to outline where there's another rock, where it's touching another rock. So for example, like here. 
So we can add that little bit of shadow here. See how I kind of break these lines up? There's uh, little square shapes. This is very effective for creating a creating the, the facets that make this look even a, like large flat rocks like this. I'll come in, I'll I'll do the little bottom edge there. Leave the top light and just keep going. I'm going to keep these uh, basically like the same kind of limestone looking rocks. I don't want to, these aren't going to be a whole bunch of different colors. You can do that. I was looking for Picasso stones myself. Yeah, there you go. But what I was going to warn you about that is if you do it, kind of create your palette. Make sure, you know, what colors are you going to use? Are they going to work well together? So you kind of want to lay it out, you know, on a piece of scrap paper and uh, just, you know, test the colors together. So as you can see, here's the top of the rock. I'm going to leave that light. I'm going to kind of create this the side of the rock here with a little color. I can leave little bits of light shining through. Like I said, they don't have to be uh, all these perfectly smooth, perfect uh, uh, creatures here. Uh, all right. Again, I'm going to maybe just Now the other thing I like to do is when I get into a little triangle corner, I love to just kind of, it's a nice little shadow spot like right here. I like kind of getting a little bit of color in there. Break it up. Now that was just a little too much blue. Let me get some, get a little mix in here. There you go. So like right in here, I want that. A little darker shadow right there. Just, again, a little triangle right there. As you can see, I, I put that on dry, but then I can go ahead and kind of soften it up a little bit so I can create Little bumps, little crusty, little jagged edges. Like I said, doesn't have to doesn't have to be smooth. In fact, I think it's a little more interesting if it isn't. So, I'll tell you what. Once you get going, you get, you get comfortable. Uh, the, the one thing you want to kind of make sure is try to keep your light source, you know, all going the same direction. That can be embarrassing. Starts out one direction, ends in another. All right. What I'm doing right now is I'm adding just a little bit of shadow under these rocks that are closest to the water. I just add the paint and then I just kind of blend it away. All right. In all fairness, though, by the time you start the painting and end, the sun would have moved. <laughs> Especially for how slow you draw and paint, Mr. McGuire. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. However, if you take a picture of it, like I said, I think in the, I've said in the past, uh, you know, plain air is fun to do every once in a while, but honestly, uh, I like taking a photo of my subject and bringing it home and, and working on it in the comfort of my clean, dry, bug-free environment. 
So, for example, on this one, see how I kind of I'll make these I'll make these lines um, kind of fault lines or crack lines, whatever you want to call them. Now that sounds like trouble right there. But as you can see, I, I kind of blend them in a little bit and they form different planes on the rock. Again, always looking for those wonderful little corners that I can sneak some dark value into. And I left a little area here where there ain't really much any rock. There'll be probably some grass or dirt. Uh, we'll go into the water. These smaller guys back here. I would say don't, you know, don't get too detailed because, hey, they're a little farther away. So... Keep it simple. But you know, make sure they have they have sides, they have facets. And like I said, don't <laughs> don't outline above, okay? That's all fine for down below. Do not do it above. That's where people get in trouble. Because they're you know, it's like you're almost drawing a rock rather than, you know, painting it. All right. So at this point, this looks, um, you know, it's a good start. Um, basically, what I do is I'll come back in. I'll add more color. And I do like to get some nice dark little crevices in there. And it's kind of, as you can see, it makes them pop out even more. Like I say, you can vary the color if you want. For this one, I'm not going to. Now, usually what's in these little crevices and stuff is things that have kind of gotten pushed up in there. Creates these nice little dirt piles and stuff. All right. And basically what I do is I'll just keep go coming back. I'll look at it, make decisions about what I want to try. Now, the other thing you can do, um, especially with little creaky looking things like this, is you might want to take... Um, and create kind of a greenish brown maybe run it along the edges of your your rocks the bottom edges that are you know obviously closest to the water give it the feeling of uh, slime. So, time-wise, you okay? Pardon? Okay, so I've got a little bit more time. All right. 
So I'll take that same greenish slimy color. Now I'm going to leave a little white line right below my rock. And I'm just going to leave that little bit of line. Makes it kind of look a little bit like the uh, You can kind of tell where the reflection um, begins because it's a little softer, a little wetter, right below that line. So I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm assuming you can, but what I do is I I don't rub over the top end of what I'm working on I you know when I'm blending these colors down what I do is I'll I'll leave the one edge dry but the other edge I will kind of then moisten and, and drag down the water all right So I think at this point I can go ahead and uh, take a break here, let this dry up, and then we'll get the water, a little bit of grass on the on the bottom here, and go from there. So let's take a break right here, let it dry. I am uh, about to do, or uh, hopefully complete, uh, the, the bottom uh, third of this painting with water. All right, so speaking of water, um, I'm going to use my big brush, which is probably full of green paint. Oh. What is it again? This is a uh, black velvet. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, this is a black velvet. Silver is the, uh, I don't know, brand. not the brand. The silver is the type of brush it is. Um, this is a three-quarter inch. They call it an oval, but it's uh, very large, holds a lot of water, and it has a very, uh, believe it or not, a very good tip on it. Um, I can actually do some pretty good detail with this brush. Um <laughs> and I would have, you know, plenty of paint for the next, you know, hour to do it. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of wet the lower half of this thing. I'm not, I'm, this area here, I'm going to have some grass kind of peeking up over the creek here. So for right now, I'm just going to leave this area kind of dry. I think this is the first time you'll have watercolor painted for watercolors. Water? Water? Watercolor water? In our videos. Well, I can wreck that. <laughs> Hold on. All right. Um, water yeah. Sure. So, I'm going to be reflecting what's kind of in the in the scenery, but because it's kind of moving water, we don't want to we don't want to um, too much detail to it. So it's more like blocks of color, and hopefully leaving a little bit of the uh, white also showing, you know, so it kind of feels like the water's moving. So I'm doing a little bit of the foreground right above the rocks here. What color are you using? Uh, well, this is yellow ochre. Okay. I kind of hit it real heavy right there, but oh well. Soon. Soon I will get my paper towel out and be done with that. If you'll notice, I work horizontally. There. Um, now I'm going to use a little bit of the uh, creamier color, which is the the uh, Naples yellow, which is slightly opaque, but I think it'll be fine. So then we're not going to see much of the of the 
building. I do believe we are going to have some of the green in the water though. So I'm going to start kind of adding that. So the idea is don't put it in, you know, in big chunks or blocks of heavy color. What we want is a little bit of movement. So, you know, maybe put them in in kind of thinner lines. And always horizontal. Leave the gray for the rocks. Okay. And remember, I'm going to have kind of a, a spray of uh, sticks and twigs over here. So I don't really have to worry about it. Now, I do believe I got a little bit of that. I'm going to put in a little bit of the rust color for the top of the building. of the building is kind of gray anyway so wouldn't show up all that much so I'm just going to go with that um, or a very light gray on this side is a little little uh, blue or gray so I think we can get some of that also to kind of show up I might be able to get a little bit of that door but as you can see, for the most part, we're not going to see a whole lot of detail anyway. And as you can see, you know, the paper's still fairly wet, and I'm adding quite a bit of, quite a bit of, uh, you know, water and paint to it as I go. So, so I don't want to leave this perfectly white here because um, because you know you can kind of see through the reeds and stuff so let's get a little more of the background color over here too so there's the gray so maybe Okay, good. So at this point, I'm going to have to pause, let it set up a little bit. But I think in the meantime, I might be able to do something else while we're letting that dry. I am going to attempt to actually put in a few um, uh, what I would like to call sticks and twigs into my background. I am pulling out this is um, uh, sepia which is a kind of a um, dark brown and black combination uh, mix that I kind of like to use uh, when I'm doing kind of wooded areas and I need some branches and sticks and things. Excuse me, I'm going to peek at something very quickly. Okay, yeah. So, um, I kind of want... We want a little bit of branches. So, notice I don't want to work real dark. We just want them to kind of come come out of the here and there where the
where these trees are, uh, you know, coming down. These these limb-like uh, areas are coming down. So I'm going to do a little more over here. I will slowly, so you guys don't get vertigo and fall over. I wonder if that happens. It's coming. If you've ever fallen down watching this. Yeah. <laughs> well, that wasn't the reason I fell down. But, uh, yeah, I sometimes wonder when I'm spinning this thing around, you know, people going, oh, stop it. Um, so, as you can see, it doesn't take a lot. You just want to give the impression. I could always try to edit it so that the painting stays fixed and you just sit around. Yeah, exactly. I'm okay. <laughs> um, so, as you can see, I've kind of I've dragged a few of these little branches in. Um but I also want to. I also want to do a little bit of some darker leaves. You know, they're not all shiny bright on the one side. Um, so what I like to do is then I like to kind of come in and just maybe. Break it up a little bit with a few of these darker pieces. And we don't want them to all be individual. You can certainly clump them a little bit. I think, in fact, I think it's important that you do clump them so that they don't appear to be all just these, you know, individual pieces. And this is a way of kind of making the lighter areas even lighter, a little brighter. As my river dries. Yeah, I imagine that's kind of weird. If we let the river dry, it'll be all dead fish and rocks, right? So as you can see, it doesn't take a lot to almost create another dimension right over top of the, uh, you know, stuff that we've been doing. Like I said, you know, you just want to give it the impression of the darker leaves that are, you know, kind of in front of the lighter ones. It, you know, leaves are so... You know, the way the light hits them, the trees and the whole nine yards, it's kind of amazing. So which green are you using for the dark green? Um, I'm using the, uh, you know, the green I was using before, the... Uh, the hour? Yeah, yes. Just straight, you're not mixing it right now? Um, I did add a little bit of the, you know, the green, the May green that I put in to make it look a little more... Um, pretty. <laughs> Not a lot of pretty greens. That's right. Don't get me, don't get me started on. Uh, I think I already did my rant on mm. on crappy greens. Uh, yeah, uh, like I said, uh, I mean, for years I had sap and hooker, and uh, hooker's green, and I'm like. Ugh. I didn't like either one of them, and I was always trying to mix greens. I just never seemed to get what I wanted till I came across uh, this May green, and then, you know, like I said, uh, permanent green light is very similar. So I think uh, not exactly the same, but it does have the same effect, I think. It just, I, I just feel it makes greens a lot uh, happier. Happy greens. Yeah. All right. So at this point, I wanted to, um, I did want to kind of, I feel this area is a little on the weak side. So I think I'm just going to increase the value. Sort of like there's a, a big tree back there. I'm glad you said it. Didn't want to talk about it. Yeah. You didn't like that either, did you? doesn't seem right. All right, so 
again I'm just uh, gonna probably I do I just feel like this area was kind of on the you didn't get it finished did you <laughs> you didn't finish did you all right so meanwhile my river is just about dry okay now oh, it's too green this is usually where I drop my brush onto the building you know to wherever I don't have green okay I'm going to lift a little of that because it got a little strong or maybe not lift it but push it around a little bit more there we go and then I'm going to take a little bit more of the sepia and I'm just going to maybe not real dark in fact I kind of want to actually fade it a little bit I just want to push a few um, tree trunks. Nothing real heavy. Actually kind of light. Through. So it looks like, you know, these leaves are hanging on to something, you know. So, anyway. Okay, you were saying I only have a certain amount of time. Okay. All right. I'm just adding a little more. Is there any rhyme or reason to where you're putting the stuff, or you're just kind of what you feel that fits? Um. Yeah, uh, I hate to admit it. It's probably kind of what looks good to me. So, I'm just adding just a little more dark back here. Safe to say that start light and add slowly because yep. it's easy to go too far. Oh, it's very easy to go too far. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one of the things you got to watch out with watercolors. But um, one last thing, I'm just going to add just a tiny bit. Uh, oh, that was the wrong color. Let me. I just want to add a tiny bit more value uh, just above my rocks here. I feel like. See, I dropped that color in. Then I'm just going to really quickly. Blend it into the picture. I just felt like they weren't, they were kind of disappearing into the grass. So that's, yeah, that's a little better. I, I have one little rock here too. It's, I'm not sure what it's doing. I think it's not done, is what it is. All right. Is it time? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We'll be back in a minute to finish this up. It'll be almost like nothing to you. I'm going to add a little texture to the water, uh, just a little more detail. I'm going to begin with a little bit of yellow ochre here. I'm going to kind of try to make my rocks stand out a little more without being too uh, detailed. You know, I'm not trying to do a... I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, replicate it. This is not a clear, smooth uh, pool. This has got a little bit of motion to it. 
either wind or just the water moving. So we don't need a whole lot of, you know, clarity or, or, or um, not clarity, but um, uh, reflection. You know, we want to indicate there's, uh, there's, you know, some reflection, but really it's, uh, you know, water's moving. So you're not going to see it very clearly anyway. So if you'll notice, I keep running uh, streaks, horizontal streaks, uh, through this image. Now, will you do a wash of like a blue or some other color to separate the river more? Or no. no. Um, nope. What we want to do is, is, uh, we want to reflect the colors that are there. Um, we really can't see blue in this image. Uh, you know, there's no sky really showing and water isn't really blue, blue, um, especially kind of shallow water. Uh, you know, we're basically, we're just reflecting what's in the background. And I'm trying right now to see if I can, like, for example, uh, the, the, the posts, you know, I might do the posts, but they, they would look more like, you know, broken up things. We might not see much of it all at all. Um, As you can see, I then kind of smear, smear them back out again. But we just, we want the impression that they're there. But, you know, uh, down here by the, one of the things I did want to do was I wanted to give, there's a little section here where I did not have any rocks. I kind of wanted to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a runway, a little bit of mud or something uh just to kind of actually just to give it some value there um oops wrong one so again i'm a little bit of sepia and then What I like to do then is to kind of pick up the color kind of above it there, but okay, just let it bleed. All right, uh, one of the things I'd like to do so, as you can see, like even in the rocks that are you know, close to the water. I like to kind of run little streaks of line work to kind of make it look like it's kind of moving. So nothing is all that detailed. Uh, I might actually throw a, you might see a bit of the barn, but you're not going to see a lot of it. So I probably even wouldn't, I just indicated it with a little bit of the orange there. Uh, again, you might catch a little bit of the door, but quite honestly, what's going to be happening for me is I'm going to be putting some grass over this. So I'm not going to see a lot of anything anyway. So let's just kind of let it go there. I might pick up a little bit of this uh, background green. So again, see how I kind of dry brush it and then very gently, a little bit of water, kind of blend it over. Try not to hit everything. 
Same with the burnt sienna right here. So this is where now it's always a good chance I can screw everything up by trying to throw a few sticks and twigs in. Um, so let's give it a try. So I'm going to use uh, yellow ochre, a little burnt sienna. Mark was thinking I might actually use something, you know, alive. That ain't going to happen. We need dead grass in the foreground. That's right. So, I'm going to do some uh, kind of long strokes of color. When you're doing grass, <laughs> I watch people do this. It makes me crazy. Grass don't all grow in one straight line, and they, you know what I mean? Like this. You haven't seen my neighbor's lawn, though. Yeah, well, his is good. I mean, I got to admit. I think he his. Yeah, but the idea is, you know, nothing grows quite uh, symmetrical. Yeah, exactly. See, this is still fairly wet up here, so I'm having trouble. I'm getting uh, uh, okay I'm just making my paint a little bit thicker but if you'll notice I'll I'll vary the angle as I do things ooh I just made a cattail right. yeah it looks like I do have to let it dry a little bit longer so, so close. So I'm just kind of hitting this with a, a little filler color in here now. But you'll notice, you know, by putting a little color be behind it, we don't have to, you know, it, it feels like it, it, it's overgrowing the, the, the little lake here. Not lake, creek. I meant creek. I said creek. All right. It's drying. I, I don't know what else to... Do you want some barbed wire on this uh, fence? Yeah, real quick. Yeah, all right. It needs to curl in a downward motion. It's old. It can't cast a shadow on anything. Oh! Guess what, guys? Uh -oh. He just pointed out something, too. You know what? I'm not going to do that. I lied. But I am. Watch. But you're right. You know, um, guess what would cast a little bit of a shadow here? I just want to get a little bit of that in. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, but. <laughs> it's um, that's kind of tricky because it is already kind of dark back there. So cool. Um, however, I guess if you say so. While this is drying, I'm I'm just trying to get the rubber band through the volcano. <laughs> You're it's it's working too. Okay, um, but yeah, there is. You know, I can get, it goes right up and over that shrub. Uh, I'm going to leave the camera for a moment. <coughs> there, I'm back. All right. What magical tool is that that we can link to in the description below? Well, these are my very special patented paper paper paint removers. And for fifteen ninety five, we can send you a roll of these things. They're amazing. Uh, they're not just for paint, either. You can absorb apple juice and all kinds of things. All right, hurry up. Just do it. It's really, it's really damp. Um, 
Is it going to be barbed wire? Are we taking a quick break? Um, I hate to say it. Yeah, uh, we got to take a quick break. It's just, it's not drying. And I could do barbed wire, and I could probably lay carpet down, too, you know. And this is going to, it, it needs to dry. So let's take a break. I'm going to uh, finish up now. Basically, what I'm going to do is just a uh, little darker lines now, uh, which means a little more paint, a little less water, okay? Uh, again, I mentioned it earlier. Watch how I... Also, you'll notice how I, I keep my finger kind of on the... on the... Uh, painting as long as it ain't wet but you'll notice that's how I can kind of make sure that I'm hitting the same uh, so I don't have real fat lines real thin lines by kind of got using my finger as a guide I kind of I can kind of you know repeat your stroke yes yes and if you notice, I, I keep changing. I, I, I make a, I'm making them all go in one way. We don't want these things that look like fans, okay? We want them to all kind of go in the same general direction. We just want them to go at, at different angles, that's all, okay? So that's what I'm trying to uh, stress when it comes to these uh, long, long leave, leaved things, okay? So, as you can see... I put a layer of the yellow ochre in. I'm now going to uh, deepen the value a little bit. I might even add a little bit of uh, brick red. It's kind of a brick red. I'll, I'll think of the name of it eventually. Um, but now we don't want too much. I'm just trying to vary the color a little bit. But yeah, right there. I think uh, last color I'm going to use is just a little bit of the uh, sepia with the burnt sienna and the brick red. I don't want a lot of this. I just want a few of these. And if you'll notice, see how they kind of break apart when they're hitting other wet pieces? Kind of gives them that little more natural fuzzy look. All right, and we are we're all about our fuzzy looks, okay? So that's why I grew one of these. So I am, uh, I think I'm about finished. So, Mr. Hicks, do you have uh, anything you want to mention? Always. Okay. Uh, first off, thanks everybody for watching. Hopefully, you sat through part one and part two. If not, go back, check those out. Uh, part one, Keith did the trees in the background. Part two is the majority of the shed in the middle ground. Uh, and obviously you saw what part three was today. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or want to show us samples of your work, leave, uh, leave that in the comments section below. We read all our comments, whether we get one or we get a thousand. Um, if you missed any of the paint colors, the type of paper, the brushes, anything that Keith's using, there's a link in the description that will take you to Keith's website and has a full list of all the materials used and affiliate links to where you can purchase them or use that list as a checklist to take to your local art supply center. And be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and thanks again for watching. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you again soon.